Thank you for tuning in to my channel, Mini Movement Man. You can handstand. This is a new series based on teaching you how to handstand. I'm gonna show you the step-by-step -step progressions to help get you there safely. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to condition the body, body alignment, gaining strength for the handstand, and how to exit. And remember, I offer online personal training. More information will be in the description below. Guys, remember to subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, and leave a comment to help support. Now let's get on to the video. The concept of performing a handstand is actually quite simple. Keep your center of mass, your body, over your base of support, your hands. As you are upside down on your hands, it's a matter of making slight adjustments to keep yourself from falling. Now let's go through the steps to make sure your body is conditioned and ready to begin to practice your handstand. Before inverting and placing all of the weight of your body on your hands, you need to make sure your wrists are conditioned. These are some examples of conditioning drills. Be sure to check out the link above and familiarize yourself with these patterns if you haven't spent any time conditioning. It's imperative that when you condition your wrists, you take your time and go slow. Proper conditioning takes months, even years. So remember, the road to being able to perform a handstand is not a sprint, it's a marathon. That's the truth. And if you don't take time to prepare your body properly, you'll never be able to reach your goal. Or it'll just take you a lot longer to get there and you're gonna be bound to run into injury along the way. Our next step in conditioning the body brings us to the alignment drills. As you can see here, I'm lying on my back trying to maintain a hollowed torso with my feet lifted slightly off the ground. This means that while you're on your back, your lower half of your torso, your lower back, should be flat pressed against the ground, while your upper torso should be slightly rounded. I'm also focusing on trying to get my arms 180 degrees up over my head. The reason why these exercises are important is because while you're in a handstand, you need to create tension throughout your entire body in order to be able to make the necessary corrections to maintain balance. One of the ways to create tension is by strengthening your core and having an awareness of this area. Perform these drills often to help build up endurance. You should be able to hold these positions up to one minute for at least three sets. Now we're moving on to building up strength, specifically in the shoulders, in order to be able to hold yourself up while you're inverted. The pike push-up acts as a bridge in order to get yourself comfortable with kicking up to a wall. There's a few key points that I want you to be aware of while performing your pike push-up. First, it's mostly about being aware of your shoulder position. While at the top of this movement, your shoulders should be elevated, close to your ears, as well as open, meaning your head is in between your arms, moving towards your legs. This is the position that you should be in while you're in a handstand. While you begin the eccentric phase of the pike push-up, you should then move your shoulders into depression, away from your ears. During the eccentric, or while lowering your body down, you should be moving in a slight diagonal. Think down and forward and up and back. Also remember to keep your elbows turned in towards your body and lightly touch your forehead to the ground at the bottom of the movement. Once you can complete a 5x5, five five, meaning performing 5 reps for 5 sets, you can then elevate your feet and work the same motion. This should get you comfortable with kicking up to the wall. 
If you are not yet able to perform a pike push-up, then I would advise you to regress and work on your standard push-up, making sure to focus on keeping your elbows turned in nice and close to your body, working the full range of motion. And if that's still too hard, then perform modified push-ups or do push-ups with your hands on a countertop or against a wall. Now we are ready to invert our bodies using a wall to help build up strength, work on alignment, as well as begin to actually balance on our hands. Up first, stomach facing the wall. The first thing we need to get comfortable with is entering and exiting. Start by stepping up onto the wall with both feet and step down, making sure you're exiting slowly and smoothly. Make sure you're pressing into the wall with your feet with a good amount of force to make sure that your feet won't slide back down. You should be in control of your body at all times, never crashing down to the ground. Once you're comfortable doing this, then you can begin with a body weight shifting drill. This teaches you how to load all of your body weight onto one arm so that you can take the other arm and begin to walk it closer to the wall. This is actually how you walk on your hands. You're aiming to make sure that you're strong enough and comfortable enough to walk your hands about four to six inches away from the wall. Now you are at the point where you can begin aligning yourself as you did with the drills on the ground, holding as long as you can. When performing these alignment drills, you need to make sure that your toes are the only part of the body that are touching the wall and your hands are firmly placed on the ground. Once you can build up the endurance to perform these alignment drills for one minute, then you know you have enough strength to begin to train freestanding handstands. Now let's look at the opposite position, stomach facing away from the wall. This is the beginning of learning the kick up, which is one of the ways to enter into your handstand. Now everyone has their own style and ways of doing things. With that being said, when I kick up, I like to lift one leg straight up towards the ceiling while the other leg flexes and catches your body when making contact with the wall. This allows you to make a smooth transition into the wall with your body as opposed to your heels hitting the wall too hard and pushing yourself back to the ground. Keep in mind, this is not the type of technique you use when performing a freestanding handstand with the kick up. Or maybe it is, depending on what shape you're looking to achieve, but that's for another video. When exiting from the stomach facing away from the wall position, be sure to tuck your knees and allow your feet to make contact with the ground smoothly. Do not keep your legs long and make a hard crash with the ground. Once you're comfortable and can effectively kick up onto the wall and come back down smoothly, you can start to try a scissor drill, seeing if you can maintain balance on your hands for a few seconds at a time. As you can see here, one foot remains in contact with the wall while switching, you're freestanding for a second or two, then you place the opposite foot back on the wall. Let me know in the comments how you do with this one. Now we're at the point where you're inverting and beginning to feel the balancing sensation with your entire body. There's a couple key points that you need to know while you're at this point. First, remember to focus on getting your shoulders into an open position. Use this wall shoulder opening drill to create more awareness of this technique and to help gain more range of motion in this area. Remember, while trying to open up the shoulders in this position, you need to make sure that you are staying in a pelvic tilt with your torso and just stretching the shoulders. Click the link up above if you need to learn more about the pelvic tilt. When people are first starting out with handstands, they usually have the tendency to keep the shoulders closed and arch their back. This is more of a banana style handstand, which is not wrong, but you won't be able to achieve that nice straight line handstand when doing this. Second is your hand position. This is incredibly important and is really the foundation to balancing on your hands. You want to make sure that you create three points of contact with the palm of your hand. 
While in a handstand, you want to keep your body weight in the ball of your hand just below your fingers. When you feel your body beginning to fall forward, you'll press into your fingers. And then when you feel your body falling backwards, you're going to press into the heel of your hand. In order to help create tension throughout your entire body, one of the areas that you need to focus on is the hand. You need to be able to actively grip the ground with your hand in order to start generating that tension. Also, you need to make sure that you are spreading your fingertips nice and wide and really rounding your fingers. Lastly, we have exiting from the freestanding handstand. If you're still watching this video and you haven't already subscribed, then what are you waiting for? Subscribe to help support. Anyways, just a reminder that each one of these steps to achieving a handstand should take weeks and even months to get fully accustomed and comfortable with. Don't rush or get too excited about trying to go into your freestanding handstand. Again, you don't want to end up injuring yourself, therefore taking even longer to reach your goal or never even getting it at all. Assuming you've taken all the appropriate time and followed all the necessary steps, at this point, you are ready to begin practicing your freestanding handstand. There are really three ways that I would recommend exiting your freestanding handstand. First is falling back to your starting position. This means that you haven't used enough effort to reach your balance point with your hips. Second is the semi cartwheel out. It's kind of a cartwheel, but kind of not. You can see here that as soon as you feel your body beginning to fall forward, you will then take a step with your hand, allowing your body to rotate out towards the ground. This variation can also be used when exiting off of a wall, so keep that in mind. The final way to exit a freestanding handstand is the forward roll. This one takes a bit more strength and coordination, but it has the most benefits when learned properly. If you're falling forward in the handstand, you want to be able to get used to making the correction by pushing your fingertips into the ground to get your body back. You don't want to get used to just giving up and cartwheeling out. By using the forward roll exit, this gives you the most time when trying to make the correction in your fingertips. Like anything else, you want to make a progression out of learning the forward roll. Start with kneeling on the ground and placing your head on the ground and rolling over. After that, I would then start by a standing position, reaching to the ground with my hands and slowly dropping my head to the ground. Finally, I would then move forward and roll out from the freestanding handstand position. Keep in mind, if you have taken the time to work on your pike push-up, you'll have more than enough strength to have a nice, slow, controlled negative to make the forward roll exit safe and comfortable. Guys, I hope you got some useful information from this video. Remember to take your time, go safe, and train progressively. As always, this is Mini Movement Man saying, be kind to one another. Peace.